Hello and welcome back to the same game tutorial for Rampai part 4 and let's just jump straight back into it. So in the last part of the tutorial we successfully created a grid and placed it inside of our same game screen and then we were able to show this to the player inside of the game. However, now we also want to make sure that the icons are displaying on top of this grid and to do that we are going to go back into our for loop but we're going to make some changes to it so that it works for both our icons and the grid. So the first thing we're going to change is this range. So instead of it we're going to say icons list to refer to the list where we have all the sprites in and then we're going to change the i to icon. So now it's going to read for icon in icons list. Now to place each of the icon sprites onto the screen we can refer to the x and y fields available to a sprite object. So let's go ahead and create a new line underneath our image statement and we're going to say dollar sign icon dot x and then for the values we are going to reuse our xp and yp variables that we defined up here and use for our grid cells. So we're going to say equals xp and then for the y we're going to say icon dot y equals yp and this is how simple it is to place a sprite onto the screen we simply refer to its x and y fields and then set values to those and now to actually show the icons on the screen we're going to tell rampy to display our sprite manager object so let's go ahead and create a few empty lines underneath our for loop and make sure that we are in the right indentation and then we're going to say add icons and now we can go ahead and check what this looks like inside of our game so we'll head into our rempy launcher and launch a project okay so we can see here that we are getting an error and this error is basically telling us that we are missing some things for our icons update function. So let's go back into the code and see how we can fix this. If we were to look inside of the Rampy documentation page, we would learn that the update function for our sprite manager object takes one parameter. And this parameter is called ST and stands for shown timebase. So to solve this error that we were getting inside of the game, we just want to make sure that we add in this parameter to our function. So we're going to say st inside of these brackets. But then we also have the icons events function, which we have added down here. And this one also expects a few parameters in order to function correctly. So let's go ahead and add these now so that we can avoid any errors once we want to run our game. So the first one is called event and this one tells the function what current event is happening on the screen and this can be for example a mouse movement, a click, a keyboard press, etc. The next one is called x and also one called y and these two supply to the function the current position of the event. So in the case of a mouse movement for example the x and y parameters will hold the x and y position of the cursor. And the last parameter is called st and this parameter tells the function the time since the sprite manager object was shown on screen. So now that we have added all the necessary parameters that we need for these two functions, let's go ahead and test our game to see how it looks like. So inside of our game we can now see that we have a set of icons displaying on top of our grid and we can see that these are randomized based on the code that we have put inside of our setup icons label. So now let's also make the icons interactable so that the game becomes a bit more playable. So back into the code we are going to go into the icons event function and in here we are going to use the event parameter to check what event is currently occurring on the screen. And the event that we want to check for is a mouse click. So to do that, let's first remove this pass statement. And instead, let's add an if statement. And it's going to look something like this. If 
event type is equal to 1025 and 1025 is the event type that represents a mouse click and then we also have to check which mouse button that was clicked and in this case we're going to check for the left button so we're going to do another if statement and we're going to write if event button is equal to 1 and if you are curious about what the other buttons of the mouse are numbered the middle button so the scroll button is 2 and the right button is 3 so before we start adding any meaningful code to this function let's first go ahead and add a print statement just to see if our if statements are correctly detecting a left mouse button click so to do that we can create a print statement inside of this if statement so we're going to write print and then we'll say we clicked like that and then we'll save but before we actually test this let's go all the way down to our start label and in here there is one important thing that we have to fix first and that is namely this events parameter that I've set here is actually supposed to be called event so we're gonna fix that and now let's go ahead and check what it looks like inside of our game so here inside of our game let's go ahead and test if clicking with the left mouse button is going to generate our message inside of the debug console so to open up the debug console we'll press shift o on the keyboard and here we can see that the message has popped up so our function is working as intended so to exit this debug console let's press escape and then we can go back into our code and see what else we can do so here back into our code let's go ahead and change this print statement to something a little bit more useful for our game and in this case we are going to create a for loop which is going to again iterate through our icons list and this is because we want to access each of the icons and then check if our cursor happens to be within the boundary of any of these and if it is then we know that the click has happened inside a sprite and therefore we want to do something so to implement that we are going to write for icon in icons list and inside of this for loop we are going to create an if statement and this if statement is going to check whether or not our mouse cursor is inside of the boundary of one of our icon sprites and it's going to look like this if icon dot x is less or equal to x and x is also less or equal to and then brackets icon dot x plus icon size so how does this if statement actually work well we're checking if the cursor's x position is more or equal to the current icon's x position and if it is then we can be sure of that the cursor cannot be anywhere before the left edge of the icon sprite's boundary box and then we're also checking if the mouse x position is less or equal to the current icon's x position plus icon size and if it is then we can be sure of that the mouse cursor cannot be anywhere after the right side of the icon sprite's boundary box and with that we have a successful check for the x axis however we also need to check if the cursor is within a sprite's boundary box on the y axis and to do that we can copy this condition and then we're going to write an and operator and then we're going to paste and instead of these x's we're going to swap them for y's like this so now we have a successful y and x axis check to see whether or not our cursor is within a icon sprite on the screen so inside of this if statement we are going to make a call to a function which we haven't yet created but this function is going to be responsible for checking for any possible matches between the icon that was just clicked and the surrounding ones 
So let's go ahead and do that now. And we're going to call this function find matches and it is going to take one parameter for now, which is going to be the icon that we just clicked. So we're going to type icon. Now, because we are inside of a for loop, which is checking each icon inside of our icons list to see if any of these is the one that we just clicked on. We also have to make sure that we are breaking the loop so that it doesn't continue to check for any other icons. So we are going to write break underneath the find matches call so that it breaks the loop. Now it's a good idea to also make sure that this is working properly. So to do that, we can first of all comment out our find matches call and then we'll make a new line and say print. And let's add a text that says this works. So let's go ahead and save. And now if we run the game, we should be able to see this piece of text being printed inside of the debug console whenever we click on a icon. So let's go ahead and test that. So here inside of our game, let's first go ahead and check if anything is printed if we are clicking outside any of the icons. So let's click around here and then open the debug console. And as we can see, we have no text printed when we are not clicking on any of the icons. Let's go ahead now and click on a icon and see what happens. So let's open the debug console again. And now we can see that it works as intended as we are getting a text printed when we click on a icon. So let's go back into the code and see what else we can do. So now we can remove this print statement as we no longer need it. And let's also uncomment our find matches function call. And now we can go ahead and create this function and supply some code to it so that the game can be able to start finding matches for the icons that we click on. So let's go ahead and create a few empty lines underneath our break statement and then make sure that we are in the correct indentation. And then we'll define our function and we have called it find matches and as i mentioned before we are passing in one parameter which is the icon that we clicked on so inside of these two brackets of our function we are going to call this variable c icon then the first piece of code that we are going to put inside of this function is going to be a list and this list is going to contain all of the matches that the game can find. So we're going to call it matches and then we'll set it to empty at initialization. The next thing we want to do is to make sure that we add our C icon variable to this matches list. So let's go ahead and do that. And so we'll say matches append C icon. The next thing we're going to add to this function is going to be a for loop, which is going to iterate through each of the matches inside of our matches list. Inside of this for loop, we are going to create different if statements, which is going to check if the current icon has any matching icons to the right, left, up and down. And if it does, it's going to add that icon to this matches list. And as the for loop progresses, the matches list is going to get bigger as it adds more icons that he has found matches the one that we clicked on. So let's go ahead and create that for loop now. And it is going to look like this. For icon in matches. And the first if statement that we're going to add inside of this for loop is going to check if there's any matching icons to the right of this current icon being checked for in the for loop. And to do that, we are going to write if icon dot index plus one is less than grid size. So how does this if statement actually work? Well, inside of our matches list, we have a bunch of icons and these icons each has an attribute called index, which we have created down here inside of our setup icons label. And the index value contains the index position that the icon has inside of the icons list. So unfortunately we are out of time yet again. So we're going to have to continue this in part five. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.